couple of weeks, we've been talking about aligning ourselves with God's vision, God's purpose for our lives. And so a couple of weeks ago, we kind of began that little message series. Then last week, we began looking at some specific things that will help us do that. And really, we're going to look at three things all total, but last week we looked at the matter of core values, and that for us to begin to align ourselves with God's purpose or God's vision for us means that, that our core values have to be aligned with biblical virtues. But, you know, we can value the wrong thing. And so this morning, we're going to talk about the second of those three things, which is spiritual gifts. And then next week, we're going to talk about life experiences. And when we can use those three things, core values, spiritual gifts, life experiences, as a process, as elements by which we can, can use, to, that we can use to align ourselves then with God's vision and purpose for us, man, what a powerful thing and profound thing that turns out to be. And so this morning, I want us, again, to think about spiritual gifts today, and we're going to look at two passages from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, and in fact, in many places in the New Testament, uh, there is teaching about spiritual gifts. So we could, have, we could have drawn from a variety of verses this morning, but I want us to look at what Paul has to say to the uh, Christians in Rome. Beginning in, in Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, I'm going to kind of skip ahead and look at some passages in Romans chapter 12. So in Romans 1, Paul says, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. And then this passage from Romans chapter 12, verses 2 through 8. Paul says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. And this is aligning oneself with God's will, which Paul says is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think more highly of yourselves than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. And then Paul is going to give a, a few examples. A few examples. If a man's gift is prophesied, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. And so we're going to take these, these two passages in Romans, and this morning I want us to think about the purpose of spiritual gifts, the problem of spiritual gifts, and the practice of spiritual gifts. And again, we could, have, we could have used a variety of other passages in the New Testament where Paul writes many, many times about spiritual gifts uh, in, his, uh, in his letters. Well, let's begin by thinking about what is the purpose of spiritual gifts, because this is important. Once we understand biblically what the purpose of spiritual gifts uh, is then we can have a working definition of what spiritual gifts are. The purpose of spiritual gifts is very simple. The purpose of spiritual gifts is to bless others. To bless others. And this is what Paul writes here in Romans chapter 1. He says that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. Strong. To make you have uh, stamina to make you have depth, to make you have fortitude in your faith. And in order not to sound arrogant about that, Paul immediately adds right after that, in fact, this is going to be such that you and I are going to mutually encourage one another. You and I are going to mutually 
encourage one another. So I'm going to make you strong, and through the sharing and imparting and exercising of your gifts, you're going to help make me strong. And we're going to mutually encourage each other. And so that's, that's what the purpose of spiritual gifts is. It, is. it is God using you to bless another person. To bless another person. Now with that as the understood purpose of spiritual gifts, as Paul gives it to us here in Romans chapter 1, we now can take from that a working practical definition of what spiritual gifts are. And that is, a spiritual gift is an expression of my faith that aims to encourage someone else's faith. It is an expression of my faith whose purpose and aim is to encourage someone else's faith. Last week we talked about Nehemiah. And Again, you know, like I said last week, Nehemiah is one of my favorite characters in the Old Testament. He's not a prophet. He's not a preacher. He's not a priest. He's a contractor. But he has a tremendous well of spiritual gifts. He has the spiritual gift of leadership. He has the spiritual gift of encouragement. He has the spiritual gift of determination. Because when Nehemiah goes and looks across the rubble of Jerusalem amidst all the people that were making fun of him, all the people that were criticizing him, all the people that were saying, you know, this isn't worth it. Amidst all of that kind of clamor and all of those voices, Nehemiah stands his ground, marshals the resources, encourages the spirits of those that are going to co-labor with him to such a degree that his expression of faith is so encouraging to the face of those around him that the walls of Jerusalem are rebuilt in 52 days. Wow. 52 days. So a spiritual gift is you expressing your faith with the aim and the purpose of then encouraging faith in someone else. Now, I, I want to just emphasize that because what I often find happens is that there are points in the New Testament where spiritual gifts are listed by name. Romans chapter 12, the passage we just looked at is one such example where Paul talks about uh, the uh, spiritual gift of prophecy and the spiritual gift of teaching and the spirit, spiritual gift of serving and, and so on and so forth. And what happens so many times is people will look at those lists and they will think, that that list is final, complete, and exhaustive, and if they can't check a box on that list, they think, you know what, I don't have it. You know, I don't have it. Spiritual gifts must be what other people have. Spiritual gifts must be what other people do and, and exercise. And so if they can't check off a box on some list that they have found, and we have to understand the writers of the New Testament are simply giving those as examples that isn't ever lifted up as being, these are the only gifts that are available to any mind. They're just simply examples. And so you and I have to understand that a spiritual gift is any opportunity that you and I take advantage of, that God gives to us to express our faith that results in the encouragement of someone else's faith. Years ago, at Ridgewood Baptist Church, where I had the privilege to serve before, before I began my ministry here. There was a, a man, I've mentioned him before. There was a, an older gentleman that was an usher at uh, Ridgewood. And so because he was an usher, he'd always come a little early to the, to the worship service so that he could be there to greet people as they were coming into the, into the service. His occupation was a custodian at Salem High School. That was what he did to earn the paycheck that he got. He was a custodian at Salem High School. But Bill Ross was his name. Bill didn't see himself as a custodian. Bill saw himself as an encourager. And he would say to me 
on more than one occasion. He's since gone to be with the Lord, but I can remember him coming in, and we'd sit on the front pew, and, and, uh, and he would say to me, he said, Nelson, every morning when I wake up and before I drive over to Salem High School, I say a prayer. And my prayer is, God, give me an opportunity today to encourage a student at the high school. That was what his, that was his true identity. Right? And Bill would share with me many times what students would share with him. Because he'd been up there for years, <coughs> kids knew who he was, and some of them, I mean, it's just amazing what young people today live with, live through. And so, you know, he would he would tell me what what some of these young people would, would share with him and how he would respond and encourage them. Now that was his spiritual gift. He wasn't a prophet. He wasn't seminary educated. He didn't have a reverend in front of his name. He wasn't ordained. He didn't have a title. But man, was he spiritually gifted. A spiritual gift is you expressing your faith with the aim and purpose to encourage someone else's faith. So that's the purpose of spiritual gifts. What are the problem? What's the problem of spiritual gifts? Well, Paul mentions it here, touches on it in, in Romans chapter 12. Now he spends a, a fair amount of time talking about this in his letter to the Corinthians. But he says there in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, he says, Do not think more highly of yourselves than you ought. You see, sometimes the problem of spiritual gifts is that it can create a sense of pride or arrogance. And you know, so many times when, when, when we talk about, when we think about, when we converse about spiritual gifts, the next thing you know, we move into a hierarchy. As if people who are doing this particular thing and exercising this type of gift are more important, more superior than the folks that are doing something else. And we have to understand that spiritual gifts are meant for the mutual encouragement of everybody. They are not, they are not something that you and I take pride in or that you and I get some kind of spiritual arrogance about because Paul is very clear that any gift that you and I have is a result, a direct result of God's grace to us. Therefore, we don't own it. We didn't create it. But it was graciously bestowed upon us by God as a means of Him using us to express faith, to encourage others. And so one of the problems with spiritual gifts is that people can kind of get overinflated. They can get a, get a higher sense of themselves than what they need to. And thus, the Apostle Paul warns against that, pushes back on that a little bit and says, Don't think more highly of yourselves than you want. Now I can tell you there's another problem that's the flip opposite of that. And that is that people don't think they're gifted. That people don't think they're gifted. That people will think, well, you know, I'm not significant. I'm not important. God's not using me the way He's using and they'll name off somebody else. Let me give you a little illustration from my life. As, as you know, I grew up in this church. And, uh, and I will, this is very humbling for me to say this as a pastor, but I can tell you that as I reflect back on the years that I was coming along, growing up here as a kid and a teenager, I probably cannot remember one sermon I heard. And, and we were here every Sunday. I, I couldn't tell you right off the top of my head right now one sermon that I heard. And we had good pastors. So these guys were educated and they were doing a good thing. And, but, but I couldn't tell you, oh yeah, I remember, you know, Reverend, and, and he, yeah, I can remember that. I cannot do that. But let me tell you what I do remember. I remember I had a little lady named Carlotta Nash when I was in the primary department here. We used terms like that. And I was in the primary department here. And one time, I don't remember why this happened, but I remember one time when I was leaving the primary department, probably getting ready to go to church, Carlotta Nash handed me a little plaque. And it wasn't anything 
you know, big time, probably cost a buck or two at a, at a bookstore, but it was a little, little wood laminate plaque. And on the front of that plaque was a scripture verse, and the scripture verse was simply this, Be still and know that I am God. Now, as I think about that scripture verse, maybe she gave it to me because I was having some behavioral issues <laughs> or something now that I really take that verse literally, right? Be still and know that I am God. Now, I took that little plaque home, and it, it wasn't any, any bigger than this little piece of, piece of paper right here. It had a little hole right in the top, right in the middle, and I hung it in my room. And I can remember that plaque hung in my little bedroom for, for years. And I've never forgotten that verse. And every time I say that verse, I visualize that little plaque. And there have been many times in my young adult life and in my adult life where when I've faced a difficulty, when I've faced a challenge, when I'm feeling discouraged, guess what I think of? Not a sermon that I can't recall, but Carlotta Nash's little plaque. It says, be still, Nelson, be still. And now, I am God. Don't ever think, don't ever think that what you're doing is not significant. Don't ever think that whatever you're doing in expressing your faith to another person isn't making an impact, isn't significant, isn't important. You never, ever know. Third, the practice of using spiritual gifts. And I'm just going to, because, you know, I like to do this, do a little alliteration. I want to give you three E's. Three E's when we think about the practice of spiritual gifts. First E is everyone. Everyone. First Peter 4.10 says, as each has received a gift, use it. Each and every one of us is gifted. Each and every one of us has spiritual gift. Each and every one of us has opportunity to express our faith for the encouragement of someone else's faith. You know, we all want to be like Bill Ross. Wake up every morning and say, God, give to me an opportunity to encourage someone as an expression of my faith. And you know what? I, I believe God is going to not only be heartened by that prayer, He's going to honor that prayer, but everyone. Second E is expansion. As you and I use our gifts, something's going to happen within us. Our faith is going to grow. Our faith is going to be deepened. Our faith is going to be enlarged and expanded. And it's going to impact in an enlarging and expanding way the face of other people and the witness and the word of the body of Christ. You see, spiritual gift isn't about addition and subtraction. Man, it operates on the principle of multiplication. It expands you, expands others, and expands in faith, work, and witness the body of Christ. And then the third E is enthusiasm. Is enthusiasm. Paul ends there in chapter 12, verse 8. He says, if it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. But if you look at all the adjectives that Paul uses after every example of those gifts that he, that he just kind of lists as examples there... Diligence, cheerfulness, generously. I mean, all of those uh, convey an attitude of excitement and enthusiasm uh, in expressing and sharing uh, our gifts with each other. And so you and I, as gifted people, are to share our gifts willingly, humbly, gratefully, and seeing it as the God-given privilege that it is. I want to close with this little illustration. When, when my boys were young, it would be, be getting around like Christmas time or maybe it might be Mother's Day is coming up or whatever. And, and so my oldest two boys, John and Andrew, maybe that four, five, six years old, something like that. And so I would look at them and I'd say, now, guys, we need to get a gift from you or your mother. And of course, they didn't have any money or, you know, anything of this nature. So we, we'd go out, you know. 
and uh, we'd, we'd go to Tanglewood or Valley View or somewhere like that, and they'd be in the car, you know, and I'd say, now what do you want to get, what do you want to get your mom Christmas or Mother's Day, whatever the occasion was that was coming up, and they'd start rattling stuff off. And of course, every once in a while I'd say, well, I don't think we really need to get that. You know, you had, had, had to exercise a little, a little judgment, a little control, some parameters on the situation. But anyway, we'd get out there and, and so we had maybe some ideas in mind, some things that they would have come up with. So we'd go get it, we'd get the clerk at the store to, you know, wrap it and so on and so forth. We'd come home and then all the way home I'd say, now look, you cannot tell your mom what we got today. And of course, all that would do is just put a lot of energy right, you know, right, right, right in the core, you know, and, and whatnot. And I'd take the gift and put it in a closet or the garage or basement somewhere until, you know, Christmas morning or Mother's Day Sunday rolls around. Then I'd go get the gift or I'd have them go get it. You know, so here, here comes the gift into, into Kathy and they're like so that, that five, six, years old, and they start bouncing. They just physically be bouncing, you know. They could not wait for her to open their gift to her. Now, I'm not suggesting that you and I get bouncy, but we ought to have an enthusiasm and a spirit of energy about us because God has given us opportunity to express our faith for the purpose of encouraging another's faith. And that's something to get excited about. Amen. That's something to get some energy around. That's something to be enthusiastic with. Because God wants to use you, each of us, as an expression of His presence and His love and His grace to another that needs to know that and hear that and embrace that. Let's pray again. Father God, we thank you for spiritual gifts. We thank you that, that we have opportunities to express our faith with the purpose and aim that someone else's faith will be encouraged. And all that that means and for the blessing that that brings to us, for the blessing that that is to another. So keep us mindful today that, that spiritual gifts aren't a list of things that we just kind of go down that list and see if we got this or if we have that. Gee, I don't have anything that's on that list. That's, that's not the way it works. But Lord, that it is in purpose to bless others to give expression to our faith. And each person here can do that. We thank you for that privilege. We thank you for that grace extended to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.